Hello artists! Today we are going to be learning how to do falling leaves with oil pastels and watercolors. The first thing you're going to do is take a piece of card paper, write your name and your class name, which should be your teacher's name underneath your name. Go ahead and flip that over and we are going to go ahead and start drawing our leaves. This is just going to be a stencil so that we can trace this on our final papers. You can go ahead and draw any kind of leaf. I'm drawing this, it's kind of a five pointed leaf. And if you make a mistake, no worries. This is just a stencil and this is not going to be part of your final project. Once you're done, you can go ahead, take your scissors and cut out your leaf. You can see here, I'm gonna go ahead and turn the page as I'm cutting. This is going to make sure that I have nice, even lines all the way around. You can take your time drawing your leaf and cutting it. We want to make sure that this is really nice since we're going to be tracing over these. And once you're done, go ahead and recycle your scraps. Now, we don't want to draw our leaves super tiny like this. That is no good. And we also do not want to draw our leaves super huge so that they go off the paper. That is not going to be a very good stencil either. These are some leaves that you can go ahead and pause the video for, and you can draw inspiration from these. So go ahead and pause now. Awesome. Now that you've got your stencil all finished, go ahead and write your name on your final piece of paper and your class name and flip it over. Now we're gonna go ahead and take our stencils. Notice I'm holding it down with my hand and you're gonna go much slower than I am. I'm gonna go ahead and draw my first leaf. Doesn't matter where, right in the page. And you can see that I'm rotating my hand around, making sure to really hold it. I can actually overlap my leaves and I'd like all of you to overlap your leaves too. This really gives the illusion that they're falling and not just floating in the air. You can see like that. I can also rotate my leaves so I don't have to have them all facing the same direction. And I can have them going off of the page too. This gives them a little more dimension and depth as we make our composition. You can see you might wanna have some leaves, just a little bit of the leaf off the edge. And I want everyone to have about five five to six leaves on their piece, depending on how big you made your leaf. You can see I'm really filling up most of my space with my falling leaves. And I'm making sure to rotate and turn my leaf to make sure that I have a really nice, interesting composition. So go ahead and do that now. You can pause the video. Once I'm done, tracing my leaves, I'm going to go ahead and take my pencil and I'm going to add some leaf veins. You see all of this beautiful detail in the leaves. And so you can go ahead and draw some veins in the leaves. Maybe you want to give it an interesting pattern. And now we're going to go ahead and use some Sharpie. So this is a very fine point Sharpie. And I'm just gonna go over all of my lines. This is so when I go ahead and use my oil pastels on my leaves, I don't lose any of this great detail. You're gonna go really slow and make sure you do a really great job. Go ahead and rotate the paper as well to make sure that you can really see where your pen is going. You can see I'm rotating my paper to make sure that all of my lines are nice and even. Once you've finished with your fine tip Sharpie, go ahead and grab your oil pastels. Your oil pastels might look a little different than mine. You're also going to get a messy mat. This is just for all of the little flakes that might come off of your oil pastels. When we open these, we're going to go ahead and use just our warm colors. Remember, our warm colors consist of yellow, orange, and red. 
This is because we really want to copy those fall colors. You're going to see that I use all of the warm colors, or red, orange, and yellow. Maybe a darker one too later. And I'm going to start with my darkest color, and I'm going to start with the leaf at the top of my page, and there's a reason for this. So go ahead and start coloring your first leaf, the, top, the leaf at the top of your paper, with your darkest color. I'm going to go ahead and do that with my red. You can see I'm actually going to make something called a gradient in my leaves. You can choose to do this or you can do something else, whatever you would like. And we really want to make sure that we try to get all of those white spaces covered. With all those flakes, you can see I'm flicking them away. I don't really want to wipe my page because that's going to really smudge all of my oil pastels. And we don't want to get oil pastels on any of the spaces that we want to leave white, which is the background. Now I'm going to go in with my second lightest color, so my orange, and I'm going to go over my red a little bit, and this is going to really help blend it out into my orange. You can see that that looks really nicely blended, and I'm going to press down pretty hard on these to make sure that I get a nice consistent color. Again, flicking that off, and if you find flicking, doesn't work, you can go ahead and tap all of those crusties off of your leaf. Now I'm going to go in with my lightest color, my yellow, and I'm going to go ahead and go all the way around the edges. You can see I'm being pretty careful to stay inside my lines, and this is going to be super important later on in the project. So I'm going to go all the way around my leaf. You can see I'm blending that yellow into my orange, and that's going to make a really nice gradient color right in there. Look how beautiful that is. Very nice. So you can see I'm really covering all of my white spaces, making sure I really get all of that done. And the reason we want to start from top to bottom is because oil pastels have something that's like a wax in them. And wax is something that we like to call hydrophobic, or it expels water. So it doesn't like to sit, it doesn't like water to sit on it. When we watercolor these, all of our watercolor is going to not stick onto where we have colored with our oil pastels. So it's super important that we only get our oil pastels where we want them in the leaves because we're not watercoloring our leaves. So you can go ahead, keep going, keep going around all of them. I'm going to go around carefully my overlapped leaves and I'm going to keep going with starting from top to bottom with my darkest color to my lightest color. Go ahead and pause the video now and go ahead and work on the pastels of your project. Hello class. This time we are finally getting into our watercolors or the last step of our project. We're going to go ahead and take our brushes and our water cups and we're just going to be using our cool colors today. So think about specifically what colors you might see in the sky maybe blue and indigo, nice purple. Go ahead and I like to just put a little bit of water in all of the colors to make them a little bit wet so that when I go to use them, I already have a nice watercolor consistency. Go ahead and wipe your brush off. Now I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna start from top to bottom again. I'm gonna start with a nice blue. So I'm gonna go ahead and go in. I'm gonna go around my leaves just like that. You can see what nice contrast that's making all the way around. Really nice. See what happens when I go over my leaf. This was what I was talking about earlier. See, I'm going to put some more water over my leaf and you can see that water rolls right off of the oil pastel. And that is because it is hydrophobic or it's, it kind of works like a wax resist. Now you can go in with a couple different colors. I actually like to overlay and overlap some of my colors, blend them in with the water. So you can see I'm using blues and purples. 
Maybe I want to use a nice indigo over here. And you can layer them up. And if you get it a little bit on your leaf, that is a-okay. So go ahead, take your colors going right around. And this is really where those reds and yellows and oranges are going to pop a lot because of that beautiful contrast between the blues, the cool colors, and the warm colors here. You can see that is looking phenomenal. So go ahead and get your materials out. Think about really what you want to do with all of your colors, which colors you're going to use. You can choose to use all blues if you'd like. You can choose to use all purples if you'd like. Or you can choose to maybe use a mix. We talked about gradients. You could try to do a gradient in the background. Whatever you would like. This is your project. I want to see some awesome creativity. Go ahead and get to work. All right, as you go ahead and finish up, make sure that you get all of the little crevices and small places that you may have missed with your watercolor. You want to really make sure that all of your spots are nice and covered. If some places dried a little lighter than you expected, you can go ahead, go back in. And there we have it. I hope all of you enjoy doing this process as much as I did, and I can't wait to see them when I get back.